Hey everybody, this is Troy with eBuzz Central. Today we're taking a look at Diamond Linux. It's based on Stable Debian, and it's made specifically for people that are leaving Windows. But before we get started, please do me a favor. Like, subscribe, or follow my channel. It doesn't cost anything, and if you end up not liking me, you can always unsubscribe. If you like the videos that I'm doing, and you want to support the channel, you can buy me a cup of coffee, or better yet, become a patron to the channel over on Patreon. Those links are down below. First thing we're going to do with Diamond Linux is go to their website, which is linux-tt.com, and it opens up this page, Diamond Linux. I'll make sure to include that in the description below. They just have a few notes up top. It's a Windows-style Linux OS. You can have an operating system in 15 minutes, Linux without special knowledge or skills, a free operating system for home and office use, and it's a free OS based on Debian and other open source software. They have a pretty straightforward website. You got downloads, you got the Linux TT Gen 5 Plus, and that's the current. The previous versions, which were Grandmaster Gen 5 and Grandmaster Gen 4, the development has stopped on those, so those aren't long-term support. And then you've got help and forum. You can go to the Linux TT forum right here. And then, of course, it's got some before install, installing the operating system. So there's good information there if you want to zip on over and read it. So I'm going to go ahead and close out of their website. And if you download it, throw it on a USB, put it into a virtual machine, and open it up, this is the screen you're met with. You've got one single panel down on bottom. Of course, it is based on KDE. And then you've got some folders up here. You've got Advanced, Home, Install Linux TT, or Trash. First thing I'm going to do is right-click, and it says Create New, Refresh Desktop, Add Widgets, Configure Desktop. Let's see if they do have some different wallpapers. What I'm seeing right off the bat is they have one other wallpaper. I'm going to go ahead and click on it and apply it. And I believe our other wallpaper has disappeared. I'm sure after you install, you will get a bigger selection of wallpapers. So we will come down to the bottom panel. You've got a hamburger menu right here. If you click on it, it gives you the ability to adjust the panel and make changes to the panel, which you can do as well if you just right click on the panel and click on panel options and configure panel. So let's go ahead and close out of that. Date and time, you've got your hidden icons, which is notifications, updates, KDE Connect. If you are an Android user, zip on over to the Play Store, download the KDE Connect app. Once that is downloaded, you can sync your phone with your desktop or laptop. That way, if you get notifications, missed calls, things like that on your phone, you can receive those right on your desktop so you don't always have to be picking your phone up to look. And of course, clipboard. So let's close out of that. Volume, battery, internet. And of course, most recent device, which is your USB. As you'll notice, nothing is pinned on the taskbar over here. We're going to go ahead and open up the app menu. And as you can see, it's your standard KDE app menu. Now, if you want to change this and you're not comfortable with this menu, all you have to do is come down here, right click, and it'll give you the one you already have. Or you can click the application menu, click switch. And then when you open it up, it has a smaller, more maybe mint like application menu. But you have Firefox over here, system settings over here. Let's go ahead and check out system settings. And with KDE and in the system settings, you have a lot of choices for customization. If you start with workspace theme, just click on it. It'll bring up that it has two themes downloaded. We are presently running Breeze. And you have Breeze Dark. If I switch to Breeze Dark and apply, you've got dark mode. Now, if you don't like the themes that you have up here and you do want different ones, all you got to do is come down here to get new looks. Click on it. And it'll give you system settings add-on installer. I usually go with rating. That way I get the highest ones up top. You've got Sweet KDE. You've got Chrome OS Global Theme. You've got the lay-in look and feel, which is one of my favorites. That's the one I run on my Manjaro. Once you find it, just click on install. Once it's done installing, you can come over here, click on it, apply, and then you'll have a new theme. Then you've got desktop theme, which basically gives you the plasma that you're using. Right now we're using Breeze Dark. You can come down here and you can see it has a little bit of transparency. But let's say you switch it to something like Oxygen. You click Apply. And then you can see down here you've got almost a completely transparent panel now. And then when you open up your notifications, it's a lot more transparent. It has a little bit of accents on the edges. And you'll also get that on your Windows as well. But generally that takes a restart. And I'm not going to restart right now, so I'll go ahead and keep moving forward. You can pick a different cursor theme and, of course, adjust your splash screen. Then you've got colors, fonts, 
If you want to make your fonts a little bigger, all you got to do is go to adjust all fonts. If you want to pick a different font, just click on the font, go down, select the font you want. Then you would click OK and apply. I'm going to uncheck that. What I am going to do is adjust the size. We're on 10. I'm going to bump that up to 12. Click OK and apply. And as you can see, the fonts got bigger across the system. Just makes it easier for you to read. Icons, application styles. You can change desktop behavior, window management, startup shutdown, account details, regional settings, applications, connections, Bluetooth, power management, KDE Connect, removable storage, display and monitor. Or if there's something you don't see and you want to find it, you just go up here and look. Click in the search box, search for it, and you can find it. So let's go ahead and close out of that. Come back down. I'm going to go ahead and put about. Now, what you will notice with Diamond Linux or Linux TT, depending on what you want to call it, KDE Plasma version is 5.14. This is a couple of generations back, but because it is based on Debian, you're going to have a little bit older applications and software, but they're going to be stable and solid. QT versions 5.11, OS type 64-bit, shows that we have 1.9 gigabytes of RAM and, of course, the AMD processors. So let's go ahead and close out of that. Come back down to the menu. We did settings. Let's go ahead and take a look at the file manager. And as you notice, you're going to have yellow folders like you're used to in Windows. That's one of the things that they're pushing is they want people, if they do switch to this coming from Windows, it feels a little bit more comfortable. Now with Dolphin, you've got your usual suspects over here. They've already made these icons a little bigger. Now, if you want to adjust the size of these, all you got to do is in this area right here, just right click. Icon size, they have them set to huge. If you want them a little smaller, you just click on large, and it makes them a little smaller. And then, of course, to resize these right here, we just come down here to this little slider, and you can slide it down. You can make them as small as you want or as big as you want. That's really up to you and up to your preferences. So let's go ahead and close out a dolphin. Then, of course, you got Kate, which is your text editor. Discover Software Center, let's go ahead and look at that. Okay, your Discover Software Center has opened up. You'll notice right here, you've got applications, application add-ons, plasma add-ons. If you click on applications, it gives you different categories right here. Right now, it starts in alphabetical order. Let's say you were looking for something under multimedia, something like Caden Live, and it would bring up Caden Live right there. All you'd have to do is click on install, or you can click on it and get more information about it and then click on install so that way you know you have the right application you were looking for but discover software center makes it extremely extremely easy to find applications so let's go ahead and close out of that file manager we already looked at firefox you have the LibreOffice suite you do have tor installed on this if you're familiar with tor it is basically a way to search or do any kind of web activity and do it anonymously if you want to do that you just go in here and click configure It'll walk you through the setup, and then you'll be good to go. So let's go ahead and close out of that. Then you've got VLC. You've got logout, reboot, or shutdown. Regular applications under education, you do have mathematics and science. Graphics, you've got GIMP installed out of the box, LibreOffice Draw, Ocular Spectacle, which is your screenshot application. Internet, you have Firefox, ESR, Internet Messenger, Qubit Torrent for your torrents, and, of course, Tor we just looked at, Pulse Audio Control, VLC Media Player, Office, the LibreOffice Suite, Settings. You've got Apper. Apper is another great way to add software to your system. Let's say you're looking for something you couldn't find in the Discover Software Center. So let's look for OBS. You just click on OBS. It'll do a search. Once it's done, you can scroll down, and there it is, OBS. You could install it from right there. Or if you already had it installed, you could come over here and uninstall it from right here. So definitely, if you download this, take a look at Apper. It's a very good tool. Let's close out of that. We were at settings, so let's go back to system. You've got discover. We already looked at info center. Console. Let's go ahead and run console. Let's see if they have HTOP installed. They do not. Let's see if they have top. And they do. At present, I have this virtual instance assigned 2 gigabytes of RAM. At rest with just the console open, it's only using 573 megabytes of RAM, which is really lightweight, especially for KDE. So if you're looking for something to put on an older computer or older laptop, or if you want to put it on something newer and have the thing fly, this is definitely an OS to take a look at. So let's go ahead and close out of that. Back down to system. You got KSysGuard, K Wallet, Midnight Commander, Utilities. 
You've got Disks, FileLite, Kate, which is your text editor, Sweeper, Help and Bug Reports, Linux TT, and Power Session. Diamond Linux is definitely a nice distribution. It's built on stable Debian. It's rock solid. If you are a KDE fan and a Debian fan, I recommend zipping on over, downloading it, throw it on a USB, put it in a virtual machine, and let me know in the comments below what you think about it. Please do me a favor today. Please like, subscribe, or follow my channel. It doesn't cost anything, and if you end up not liking me, you can always unsubscribe. If you like this video and the other videos we're doing, and you like what the channel is doing, please think about supporting us. You can buy us a cup of coffee, or better yet, become a patron to the channel over on Patreon. Those links are in the description below. Once again, thank you for watching my video, and I will see you in the next video.